What made this particular event so severe was that normal Arctic outbreak that we expect to get pretty much every winter was made colder, stronger, longer, deeper south because it was reinforced by a breakdown of the stratospheric polar vortex. The vortex on a typical winter doesn't really have any effect on our weather down here in the United States. But every so often, about every two years on average, something will disrupt the polar vortex. Wind exists because of temperature differences. Warm air expands. So if you were sitting on top of a layer of air that extended from, say, New York up to the Arctic and looking towards the North Pole, it would look like that layer of air was tilting downhill. And so just like water wanting to flow down the side of a mountain, that air starts to flow down that hill towards the Arctic. So that creates a south to north wind, but because the earth is spinning, it turns that wind to the right. And so we end up with a west to east wind going around the northern hemisphere. And that is what we call the jet stream. When the jet stream becomes very wavy for whatever reason, and by wavy, I mean taking these big northward swings and southward dips, that wave energy can travel upward and start poking the stratospheric polar vortex. You can think of the polar vortex as a spinning top. And if you start poking at a spinning top, eventually that top is going to fall off its spindle. In this particular case, it made it split. And when that happens, we know that, that we're gonna get some crazy weather. These breakdowns of the stratospheric vor vortex happen naturally, but there is more and more scientific evidence that these things are starting to happen more often. And we believe that there are some climate change connections. The jet stream, of course, is a very complicated thing. Many factors can cause it to be wavier. The fact that the Arctic is warming so much faster than anywhere else, about three times faster than the globe as a whole. Sea ice, for example, which is the ice floating on the Arctic Ocean, is now about 75% smaller in terms of volume than it was only 40 years ago. And the Arctic is a very important part of the Earth's climate system. You can think of it as the refrigerator of the Earth. We're as certain about the impacts of human activity on the warming of the globe as we are about having a ball in your hand and when you let it go, we know it's going to fall to the ground. We have understood the physics behind those extra heat trapping or greenhouse gases in the atmosphere for over a century. I really want to acknowledge just the immense human suffering that we saw. The leaders and decision makers and utility companies in Texas need to listen to the science. Texas usually thinks more about their heat situation and having air conditioning. But as we've just seen, the cold is much more debilitating, especially if you also don't have electricity and you don't have water and you, the hospital's not working. It's gonna take some money to be spent. And that's really true across the board when you start talking about climate change. Preparing for it in advance is going to cost much less money than dealing with the damage that comes later. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.